It's the day after the Breeze Tournament at Brandywine, and you know what that means. It's time for the Trees Tournament at Lums Pond State Park. Nathan Cron outplayed Mike Moser last year for a big upset. Will this year be a replay? Stay tuned as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. Welcome to another edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We're at Lums Pond State Park in Bear, Delaware for the annual Trees Disc Golf Tournament. It's windy, it's rainy, we got some of the top pros around, and they're in a tight bunch. This is going to be a great event. I'm Carl Cubbage, and I'm joined once again by Matt LaCourt. Matt, tell us a little bit about Lums Pond State Park, this event, the players and the conditions they're going to have to deal with today. Well, today uh, it's, win it's a little windy, it's rainy, and they're playing in the trees at Lums Pond State Park, a little bit different from yesterday's action where they were out at Bre uh, the Breeze event, which is at Brandywine Creek, Creek State Park. And that's a little bit up and down the hills, a lot of wind, and it was windy yesterday. So a little bit different conditions today. Uh, the course is definitely a lot different. It's a really tight uh, with wet conditions. Top pros are looking for a good grip on the disc, a firm surface to tee off of, and uh, good luck through the very tight trees. Very good. And uh, Mike Moser took the event yesterday, so he's coming in pretty strong to this event. But we have a, a good group, a tight group here. Yeah, going into the final round, Steve Bro and Brian Stroney are both at 52 and Mike Moser at 53. And, and we got another pack of seven, three shots all behind them. So anything can go here, especially in the trees where, you know, you make a birdie or a bogey in any of these holes. So, Matt, it may come right down to the wire. Yeah, I think we're looking at the last hole action. Very good. Well, let's go down to the course and check out some of the earlier action today. After a day of plastic flying out in the open at Brandywine Creek State Park in Wilmington, Delaware, it's now a day later and time to head down to Bear, Delaware to endure the smacking of the trees at Lumps Pond State Park. This course proves to be the complete opposite of Brandywine by having fairways lined with heavy rough of thick and thin trees while shrubs and bushes guard the target as players endure the frustration of having their disc land so close yet so far away. Players shared with us their thoughts on the challenges the group players at this disc golf course. I think the hardest hole is number nine. Uh, it's a long hole and it's in the woods and I, you really have to place your first shot so that you have a chance to make your second shot with all the trees that are on that hole. The basket's well guarded by uh, trees and uh, every shot has to be just right on to, to play that hole well. Getting through the fairways without hitting the trees, getting it smooth to the basket, because they're all reachable, but it's just a matter of hitting those fairways nice and smooth. It takes uh, quite a bit of uh, finesse to get it through uh, for the long pin positions and uh, it's other than that it's it's a great course it just uh, you really need to have a finesse shot to get it through the trees this course has had a long history as one of the Delaware disc golf courses club president Steve Winchester shares with us the history behind the development of this disc golf course we installed Lums Pond we started in like 1988 and it was a two-year endeavor a lot of clearing kind of an Army Corps of Engineers project actually uh, we cooperated with the uh, state parks and we paid for half the equipment and they paid for the other half and we built a course that was pretty revolutionary at the time, one of the highest uh, scoring courses for 18 holes in the country at that time, back then, that was 1988. Today it's just a normal course, it's well played, it's broken in, it plays so still hard but it's an average course, it's good. Some of the culture of the Delaware disc golfers comes from the Lum Skulls of Lums Pond State Park. Steve shares with us the story of the Lum Skulls. The Lum Skulls, uh, they evolved mainly from Tom Lovell. He was running monthlies here and running doubles here. He was really active, keeping the course maintained. And everybody just kind of formed this club of the Lum Skulls, and they all got their nicknames Flick Skull, Gray Skull. Everybody had a skull nickname, so he really stuck here really well. It's kind of funny. Guys have a good time. The Delaware Club recently put a new course very close to Lums Pond at Iron Hill Park. This is a course that has a layout that is world class. Iron Hill is expected to be ready for tournament play next year. And when it is, the question's been asked will this be the last year of the Trees Tournament at Lums? And now it's time for the What About Disc Golf segment where Jim Myers will help you improve your putting game. How you doing, Jim Myers? 2000 World Masters Champion, Innova Team member, 
and I'm here to uh, do a little putting here on video. Uh, the, the way I putt is I kind of just loft it out there and send it above the basket. Try not to put too much on it. And hopefully it goes in, doesn't go too far away. Ken Climo is the master of putting though. That's a fact. The grip that I use is basically, uh, actually Ken Climo told me this is the way to do it. You hand it to somebody, they grab it, and your, that must be your most comfortable grip. I use the same grip for a power drive as I do a putt. And it seems to work. Straddle putt action. So the straddle putt, <clears throat> if you're in a situation where you have an obstruction, you're gonna have to step out from the side of that obstruction. You've got your foot on your mark, and you basically have to straddle out to the side. And that kind of gets you out of trouble. Um, some, some people use a turbo putt. On the turbo putt, basically balance the plate using my thumb as the center support. And as you release the putt, you push it with the, with the index finger to get the spin into the bucket. The king of turbo putts would be Mr. Dave Greenwell. He is the king. Went in. <laughs> I only use it going over hedges or rock walls like at Brandywine Creek State Park. There's one last putt that I learned from Tom Edwards in Baltimore, and it's the flippy putt. And I only use it from 10 feet out, and it's kind of like the turbo putt grip. and it basically paddle wheels into the basket. And the only reason I use that putt is because in five years of PDGA, I've only missed one of those. And unfortunately, it was at USDGC last year. But, but it is a very effective putt from just short. A lot of people miss 10-foot putts. No, I don't miss 10-foot putts. Uh, the longer putt, just try to feel it in the window and have a long stroke with it. Well, I appreciate you talking to me, and here I am here at the Grange, a beautiful spot. The weather was perfect, and we all had a good time. Well, Matt, you can see it's tough out there on the course. The conditions are tough, but everybody's having a great time. Matt, you talked about some of the players that we're going to see today. We're in the Open Division. Who are we covering today, Matt? Once again, we're going to we're going to see Steve Bro, who shot a 52 the first round. He's from Blue Belt, Pennsylvania. Local uh, course is Sedgwick Woods. Then next we have Brian Stroney, who's from Hawkinson, Delaware. Uh, he's, Brian's been playing for quite a long time, has very big arm. Not sure, you know, he fared pretty well for him in the woods this first round. And finally, we got Mike Moser at 53. Uh, one stroke behind, Mike is a world-class player. He's been top 10 in the PGA Pro world at least 10 times. Uh, top player in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast regions since 1992. So one stroke behind, he's got some ground to make up. Let's see if he can do it. Well, Matt, this should be really exciting because conditions are tough and we've got the top pros out there and we've got a course that requires them really to make the shot. So it's going to be an exciting event. Yeah, the person that can keep their disc in the fairway and make those big putts through the trees is going to be the winner today. All right, Matt, we're going to go to break and then we'll catch the final action.